All right, guys, um, welcome to the stream. Today, I'm basically just going to be trying to make a 3D model, sort of like a PS1 style um, Makarov pistol. So I'm going to try and um, scream a little bit more frequently and try to do a few more of these PS1 style um, models. Uh, ideally with the intention to actually, you know, just bundle them up and either maybe sell them for a couple of dollars or just give them away depending on, you know, how I feel the quality is. Um, I'll show you, I've got a pistol here that I've um, been working on recently. This is a, a Beretta M9 pistol. Basically it's, uh, let me just separate that out because that should actually be a separate object. Um, essentially what I've done is just photo bashed some pictures together. So I'll go back here, M9. I'll show you the diffuse texture. So what I've done, I've essentially just gotten some like, you know, side profiles. Um, this one here, that's, you know, the underside of the pistol. This is the top of the pistol, that's the rear. Um, and then this is also the front. I've had to obviously make some manual tweaks. This is a barrel texture that I've had to make from scratch. That's a it's a bit hard to tell, but that's actually the hammer. Um, and I just reuse parts of the texture for, for various bits and pieces. I think I've used, I think this part of the hand grip is actually part of the hammer. Um, so yeah, I, I just basically put it all together into Photoshop as a very loose uh, texture. And then there is a process, which I'll hopefully try and show on stream today, of uh, essentially just baking all of those you basically bake from one UV set to another and then you end up with a, a much tighter, more compact uh, UV set. So I will don't think I can, I haven't got the right mode selected. It should be the UV editor. Uh, so rather than having everything spread out you know, as it was in Photoshop where you've got, I mean, this is a quite a large image. It's about, yeah, 1024 by 1024. Uh, this one's a fair bit smaller, 512 by 512, but you still get a lot of that good detail. Um, yeah. uh, respectively, you know, we are going for a low poly PS1 style look. So anyway, I'll stop going on about that one, but uh, essentially this is the style I'm going to try and replicate with the Makarov pistol uh, on stream today. So we'll just go new general. It's fine. Don't save that. Delete the default cube as is tradition. Uh, so now I've actually gone through and I've collected some reference images from various places. So I'll load one of those up. I oh gosh, I've got to check. I think it's the Makarov side. Yep. So this one will be my predominant reference image today. And then we're going to go through and make the model first. I actually might line that up just with the barrel axis here. Uh, so yeah, this will be the predominant reference image. I'll put in the front image as well. And that I think will give us a bit more, tweak that so it's the right size. A little bit hard to get these perfect. All right, so I'd say that's pretty good. We can sort of tweak from there. So it's not going to be 100% perfect, but at least we'll get us most of the way there. Um, all right, so let's just get into it. So first, just split that in half. We'll mirror that. And just start dragging these around to line everything up. So one thing, I've noticed a couple of areas that I think might be a little bit trickier in terms of the, uh, the topology. This little arc here, um, that might be a little tricky. This rear hammer, depending on how much detail we want to put in, that could just be, you know, we might put in one sort of cut, loop cut there and drag that out or bevel that. 
Um, and otherwise, maybe just this thumb grip looks a little bit uh, curved. I think I've got a three quarter view that I just collected um, that might show that a bit better. Yeah, so there's a bit of a notch there, depending on how much detail again we want to put in, we'll try and go for that. Um, but yeah, otherwise should be pretty straightforward. I, I thought this one would be a good sort of example to get started live on stream. Um, just to double check is that, yeah, it's all pretty well flush. There's a slight, slight divot there at the front. Now, if I was a smarter modeler, because I'm not great at this, I do just do it as a hobby. I should probably have these as reference images in Blender, but I personally don't really like doing it that way. That's just my preference. Um, all right, so we'll drag this face in a bit more. Bevel that edge. Actually, we might do a bit more of a curved bevel on that one. Let's just drag that all the way in. Oh, looks like that's gone a bit awry. All right, so let's add. Yep, yeah, that looks pretty good. Drag that up a little bit more. Drag that in. Oh, let's just see how that looks. Excellent. All right, good stuff. So we'll just need to extrude this out a bit. All right, and then the bottom of this barrel here, let's actually just we'll take that. Actually, how do we do this? Maybe just cut across the front. Probably could have done that a bit better to begin with. Actually, hang on, let's just, let's line all these up. So scale it on the Z, bring that back up, screw it down. And then that way we've got a little bit more sort of room to play with um, and that curve comes in at about here we'll put another supporting cut about there Oops, we'll just hide this other reference image for now now see with the ps1 style you probably don't want to have this doesn't contribute much to the silhouette so we'll try and get rid of that as quickly as possible i mean maybe let's just merge that in at the moment so merge by distance dissolve these two edges that aren't doing a whole lot um, for good topology I mean if you're doing a curved surface you probably do want some of those triangulation edges you don't want to have big end gons like this but for now we're just sort of roughing out the shape so nothing to worry about too much um, although what's this cut doing here on the front yeah again that one's not doing a whole lot so we'll get rid of that edge cut doesn't contribute a whole lot. All right. <clears throat> so I think these, let's just move this face in a bit. See how that sort of looks. I actually think for a rough mock-up that looks okay so let's flip to the back uh, I think we'll just need to bring that up a smidge about there and we'll screw this one out and just rotate and just line these all back up Okay. So 
So that's okay for now. Again, we might want to maybe bring this one in a bit, but we'll we'll come back to that, I think. Um, so let's just add a small cube. Scale that down to maybe a bit 0.1. And this can be our site. So we'll do the same thing, actually, before we cut it, let's just shift it off axis, mirror, if I mirror that cube, uh, enable clipping, and we'll just bring that in. So here's where we, I might use one of the other references, so from a three quarter view, where do the sites sit? I mean, this is obviously, I think, a more modern. Makarov, so that's probably not the best example, but yeah, it looks like on this curve they come out a bit, so we'll have to have a little bit sort of jutting out. Um, and that's just like a base, I believe, for the sites. Oops. To delete that hidden face, we'll bring that down. Delete that face, and we'll do. Duplicate that, just drag it out a little bit. Yeah, okay, so we can't quite see the sights on this uh, front reference pick, which might have a quick look just for another another one. So Akarov front view. And even one like this might be might be helpful. I'm gonna try and get ones that are as I believe orthographic is the term where the, you, you don't see much perspective. You know, the front of the gun and the rear of the gun are pretty well the same size. You don't have a, you know, it's taken with a long focal length uh, camera. And that one as well might be good. So they're pretty, pretty blocky. I think these are not quite as wide. And then let's just bring that a little bit closer to the center. Yeah, that looks okay. Good enough for uh, PS1 style. So we'll duplicate that. This can be our front sights. We'll get rid of some of this uh, extra geometry that we don't need anymore. Bring that in towards the center, just get rid of that center face. Now, what does our front sight look like? So that's molded into the, that's part of the form of the barrel. So that, uh, we'll just do a little bit of a curve at the front here, so let's just bring our side reference back. We'll position that a bit better. Now one thing to bear in mind, you can see that it's a bit curved here, so it's actually, that's a bit more of the side of the pistol, so rather than lining it up exactly with the reference, so I, I might still do that just to model the shape of it, but uh, eventually we'll, we'll shift it back so it actually sits in the right uh, position on the, on the gun. So we'll bring that back bring that forwards, bevel that one. I'd say we probably don't need that much geometry there. And we'll just line that up there. Okay, now I think our rear sights, yeah, they're quite a bit taller. So just go in here, grab that, drag that down, pick that up a bit, make sure it's, it's poking out a little bit, so we'll drop that down. There we go. 
All right, so it's looking okay. Um, I'm liking that front less and less, so I might revisit that now. I'll just try and tidy this up a bit. Um, again, if you're trying to do this at home versus me, you'd probably, um, I'm sort of rushing it. <laughs> I don't normally do live streams. I'm probably not quite taking as much time as I normally would to, you know, make sure it's nicely aligned and all that, so. Just go through here. Um, actually, look, if we just apply smooth shading for now, we'll auto smooth that out, crank that up 180, and then just set some hard lines. Yep, yeah, that's good. That's good. That's a hard face. So we'll say mark is sharp. That'll bring a bit more definition back to it. And then I think we just need to sort of carve out like that. Yeah, I think we'll need another loop cut here. And just sort of trace the, uh, trace that down a bit. So we'll go into here, bring that back a smidge. Um, in this case, this geometry, I think is not actually needed. So we'll merge that out. We'll get rid of that. Or it might be good as a supporting face, actually. So maybe we'll leave that there. And uh, as I've just noticed, I've not actually saved my Blender file yet. So let me do that quickly. That would have been a bit hectic if that crashed. <laughs> All right. So let's see how that looks back in the wireframe view. We'll just harden up these edges here. Mark that as sharp. Yeah, not loving it. Which I think if we bring that out. No, I've, I've gone a bit weird here. Maybe let's just scrap this. Now, what is this? Let's get rid of that edge loop. Just fill that face in. Yeah, there we go. That looks much better. Let's just pull up that reference one more time. Have a bit of a look. So there is a bit more of a curve here on the bottom that I'll probably have to blend that into. So let's go ahead and do that now. Might just, uh, well, before we do that, bring back our side reference. Um, and that curve, I'd say, comes at about to here. So let's bring all of that down. Um, and we can tizzy this up a little bit later, but let's get rid of these sharp edges for now. Clear that sharp. We want to clamp that overlap so it doesn't stick out too much. clear that one as well harden these ones up this one should also be hard uh, in that case then that probably shouldn't be hard but i think we've actually we've ended up with duplicate edges there so we'll merge that harden these back up and that looks a bit better so now we just need to refine the shape of that curve So I can't help but feel my perspectives off a little bit here. We'll just bring that down a bit more. Check, see how that looks again. Now look, to my eye, that doesn't look too bad at all. 
So I think we might just leave it there. Let's just put another hard edge in there. And that's our slide pretty well done. Um, and one thing about the Makarov that I've sort of noticed from the reference pictures, it looks like the barrel sits pretty well flush. So we're not going to need to put much of a silhouette on there. Um, I suppose if you were going for a slightly less low poly look, you could, but given that I'm trying to, uh, where's my statistics? I'm trying to keep it fairly low. I mean, we're already at 200 tries. Um, I think we might just leave it as at that. Um, one thing though, I'll need to bump these sights up a little bit just to keep that silhouette there. It's just, yeah, so that's not sticking out. That's excellent. And we'll get rid of this bottom face. Okay, so I think next step we'll work on the body of the gun. So let's put in another cube. Uh, that one could be a bit, oops, get rid of that. And just do the same thing. So we'll go in, delete this half, mirror that. And we'll bring that forward to about there, bring that back to the edge of the slide, put that about there, and let's start cutting away. So we'll try to sort of capture that, um, that silhouette here. That looks okay. We'll have to do something here in a minute. just keeping that sort of three-quarter view there. Um, it does actually stick out a bit, so that might not be too bad, but we'll maybe make it a bit less obvious. And just sort of maybe, yeah, bring that in a bit there. So that's good. These sides we'll have to bring in a little bit. That looks good. Um, and the rear, I think, is a bit more contoured. Um, although I didn't get a great reference image of the back, so maybe let me have a quick look for one. Here we go. Um, yeah, so it sort of sweeps out a bit there, but otherwise I think we might get away with keeping most of that pretty flat. Um, yeah, so one thing I might do, let me just hide this, hide this. We might sort of cut out a bit just here for that rear, uh, uh, where the hammer is essentially. We'll, we'll have to cut that out. Um, so let's just maybe extrude this out just on the X. Uh, this one will extrude out on the X. That's... I think maybe let's just meet in the middle there. To harden that back up, there we go. Okay, so that looks good. Um, realistically though, that should actually be cut out as well. Let's just get rid of this face. Um, I mean, re really realistically, it would go the whole way, but um, given that we're really only gonna see it from, you know, this angle at most, um, that should be fine, so. We'll join this back up um, and then just start filling in I think, some of these edges. So that'll be hard. 
that's another one there we go so i think if we play our cards right we can sort of fake this you know from the side once the hammer's in you're really not going to see much um flip it back a bit um you're not going to see much in there that'll be black for the most part so there we go um cool all right so now that we've actually got a bit more geometry here to play with let's try and fix up that uh, side silhouette that should actually be a good deal closer let's bring that maybe let's bring the whole deal in a bit that can be there that can be in a bit more there we go that looks quite good okay so let's just extrude this a bit that and I think we'll need probably one loop cut here and another one just for the uh, oops, just for that side silhouette and this one we can sort of tuck tuck in there and I might just bevel that out once so that follows the lines a bit better and then that one will just merge in probably not the best in terms of uh, you know geometry but we are trying to keep it fairly low poly in fact I think I might just skip putting in an edge loop there and we'll maybe just shift that a bit further forward no I think that that should be okay once we've got the trigger trigger in um, you'll, you'll notice that a bit less uh, one thing we'll probably just have to make that a bit skinnier too so if I hide this reference we'll just bring that in maybe like that yeah there you go that looks a bit better uh, maybe let's I'll compare <laughs> to one of the reference images just to see Actually, no, it does seem to sit quite flush all the way up, so maybe maybe I'll leave that a bit chunkier. Uh, let's see how that... don't know. If anybody... I notice we've got a few uh, viewers at the minute. Well, maybe not if I'm reading it wrong. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, if anybody jumps on, just feel free to give me feedback. Um, you know, I'm, I just do this as a hobby, so um, I'm not the most artistically inclined. If anybody has any feedback, I'm always open to it. Um, or if there's any issues with the stream or audio, just let me know and I'll try and tweak it as we go. All right, so that as well, I think, looks a bit better. Uh, maybe let's just try bringing that middle down a bit as well now that we've got the geometry there it doesn't won't hurt um, and I think probably time to start adding the trigger guard in so let's just duplicate that bring it out as a separate object bring that. probably want clipping back on now we'll do that you know, reference image back okay okay so let's just line this up bring it up to probably about here bring that down Maybe midway, we'll put that there. Uh, extrude that out. I'm 
Okay, so we'll do a quick uh, solidify modifier. Do that from the middle. That looks pretty good. Uh, one thing I might do is shade it flat. We'll make that edge sharp and then just auto smooth it. That looks a bit, should look a bit better. Um, but we can fix that up once we apply it. So we'll make that all real geometry. Um, go from the front, we'll split that off, delete that, and then just mirror it one more time. And then just these ones will mark sharp and that should, yeah, that fixes it up. Okay, so that's that's also looking good. Just bring that down a bit. Probably get rid of these end faces as well. Maybe just another edge loop in there to sort of bring it in a bit. Make sure that that lines up there nicely. And we don't want too much of it sticking out into the model itself. Um, that can cause some issues when we're actually baking the texture. And it just means we're wasting texture, texture space, so we'll try not to do that. All right. So flick the gizmos off again. Now I've stuffed up here um, because I haven't got clipping on. So let's just go in and fix that up here. We'll scale that on the X zero, bring that across. That should look a bit better. Excellent. Okay, so we're getting most of the way there, actually. We're almost to the, uh, the texturing phase. We're sitting in about 400 triangles at the moment. So um, in my opinion, that's fairly decent. Um, if you were trying to do an authentic PS1 style, you could probably cut out um, a lot of these supporting loops. I mean, even I, I might even just do that now, and you know, you can combine that, that sort of thing. Um, you know, these these supporting. It's done. Let me just have to re resharpen all that. Yeah, there's a there's a lot of ways to optimize. Um, and it's part of the reason I really love this art style is that it forces you to think of of ways where you can um, you know, reduce the amount of actual geometry you have whilst retaining a lot of the silhouette, which, um, you know, I, I'm not the most, as I said, I'm not a great artist, but, um, you know, this feel like it really forces me to practice, get better at my actual the the essentials of modeling i suppose so all right anyway um back to the model let's try and tackle the trigger now so we're going here do as we've been doing cut that in half mirror it bring it in and um, we'll be clipping on though that Now, I might just do it this way. And, um, you know, as, as always, depending on how authentic you want to get, you can exclude some of these details. I mean, personally, I think that's probably just a waste of geometry. You know, you, you get the idea. We just bring that back a bit anyway. Um, meet the barrel. 
mean, you you really get the idea anyway. I'm not sure if having that, what is that? Maybe a safety or something, or just part of the trigger action. I'm not sure if you necessarily need it. We could always just make that a bit fatter at the top to sort of fill it out, give it more of a authentic silhouette. Cool. All right. I'm quite happy with how this is turning out, actually. Um, let's apply that. We'll get rid of this middle seam. Just to free up a bit more geometry. Uh, let's we'll join that and that together. We'll have to toggle on auto smooth. Now we should we've got a duplicate face in there. We'll get rid of. We'll just harden these edges up as well. Um, one other thing, actually, if we just shade the whole object as smooth, then we can sort of start putting in some harder edges around here. That's another hard edge we need. These two will need to be hard. That whole area there, bottom of the magazine. Uh, the rear there, that needs to be hard. Okay. So yeah, looking quite good. Um, I mean, I suppose just for probably neatness sake, if we bring that in. Yeah, we might just we'll bring that in so it meets the actual slide. Doesn't look like a modeling error, <laughs> maybe. Um, although, do I not have any geometry on the slide? No, that's okay. Just bring it in to meet one of these edges. That, uh, yeah, that looks a bit better. All right, so if we just sort of tweak down here a bit, uh, probably just that one I'll need to... No, I don't think I'll do that. Um, what else do we need? We need a hammer, I suppose. So let's duplicate that. That's probably a good starting point. Just um, rip some of these edges around. Get rid of that. All right. Okay, so I'll bring our side reference back, um, go into wireframe and just start tweaking. So actually, if we, I think if we bevel these two, let me just make sure we've actually got geometry. Yeah, cool. If we go in there, bevel those two edges, make it roughly cylindrical, and then just sort of rotate that. Um, probably don't need all of that down there, for now at least. Um, all right, so we'll move that there, just sort of refine the shape up a bit. And then for now, we'll just sort of put in an edge there. Make sure these actually fit the sides of the slide. Although, why has that come out a bit further? I think that slide's not quite flat. All right, so we'll hide that. Let's just fix that up for now. Yeah, that looks better. Didn't notice that before, actually. 
Um, all right, so we'll go scale it on the X, move that in. Same on this side, scale it on the X, bring it in. Done. All right. So shade that smooth. We'll make all of these edges around here hard. Sharp, I should probably say. Okay, great. I think that's looking quite good, actually. And probably the last thing, because um, one thing I, I quite like to do with my models is actually have a bit of, um, you know, detail to them. I would probably want to do a cutout for the, what would you call that, the, the breach, uh, and actually put in a barrel. So when you pull the slide back, you can actually see the barrel exposed. Um, I'll try and, yeah, so just like that. Um, so it roughly comes back to about, there, I suppose that makes sense. Okay, so we'll put in a cylinder. Just do what six faces I think should be fine. Apply that rotation. And we want to scale it in every direction except for Y, so we'll do that. Move that up to roughly where it needs to go. Bring in our side reference again, just for scale. Yeah, cool. So that looks quite good. Um, I suppose the only other things now is actually if we start applying some of these modifiers, I'll merge that in with the slides that goes with it. Uh, this one as well, visual geometry to mesh, apply that. Don't know what that cube is for. We'll bring that back to about there, I'd say. I suppose if the magazine was there, it would feed about to there. Um, not that it matters too much because we're not going to see that, truth be told. Um, and let's just switch on auto smooth, sharpen up these two faces here. And that's it. We're almost done. Okay, so let's just see how that looks again. There, fabulous. That probably doesn't look that impressive, particularly down here at the moment. Um, I suppose one thing I, I did mention we might look at is, is maybe that cutout um, for the thumb grip, if I show you that on the three quarter view. <clears throat> maybe let's just Given that we're only we're under 500 tries anyway, let's just try and refine up the geometry a bit. I don't quite know how we're going to do it. Look, I think for now that's okay. I suppose I could do that little safety catch, but um, again, I think a lot of that will come through once we start texturing anyway. So let's start. Uh, let's start UV unwrapping. I think this whole area here, well actually, number one, let's flick over to the UV workspace and we'll start working on it here. Make a new material, uh, probably make a new texture in Photoshop. Okay. Let's 
All right, so let's do the slide first. Maybe just do a quick cube project. Now, I think that little area here might be a little bit troublesome, so I'll try and stitch that together. Okay. Oop, totally forgot the other side of it, which doesn't help. Hold on, sorry, what are we doing here? Actually, look, for now, let's let's do the texture first, and then I think we'll start looking at the uh, the actual UV unwrap. It's probably a bit easier if we have a texture to work off. I'll put that in here. Just blow that up to about there. Um, one cool thing I've noticed in Photo, I think the latest version, it's got this object selector tool, which um, I think essentially it's you know similar to the the previous uh, what is it, quick selection tool or the, or the magic wand tool. It's a bit hit and miss, um, so I might not use it this time. It seems to have sort of stuffed up the trigger there, so I might just um, bump up. Brightness and the contrast here. Rasterize that. Let's just keep going. No, that doesn't look great. That's okay. We might just have to cut it out by hand, really. Do a bit of manual, manual cleanup. So I'm just sort of trying to get um, the overall shape. I mean, this doesn't need to be perfect because we're not going to be making the texture just from you know one angle and essentially laying it right on top because the geometry is not going to match. But this is just so we have a pretty clean slate to work off for when we're actually you know stitching the texture together. Um, just means that when we sort of cut and cut stuff out, we're not bringing a lot of these weird little you know white outlines with it um, as much as possible just makes it look a bit neater and I think one other thing I'll try and get rid of but given the nature of this gun's materials this sort of bakelite material as you can see is quite reflective particularly here at the back so I might um, once we get our outline done which that looks pretty good. Um, I think a lot of this will just be, let's just duplicate that so we're not ruining the original. Um, a lot of it will just have to sort of go into the smudge tool and just sort of blend it. Just so it doesn't look quite as reflective. So it doesn't look the best, but better as a starting point if it doesn't look quite as quite as reflective particularly on the underside so once once we've got the finished model it's, it, it will look a bit weird if, if the bottom's shinier and you know it's good if we have the top reflections but typically I mean because we're working on just a diffuse texture it looks better if the bottom's actually darker it sort of gives the, the impression of shadow you know highlights on the top shadow on the bottom so 
I'm just trying to get rid of these sort of harsh features. We, we can actually come back in and through a bit of texture painting can actually add these highlights and stuff back in. So it's not a big, big loss for now. I mean, one other thing as well I wouldn't mind getting rid of is just these big JPEG artifacts. Um, so if we're sort of blending it out, it's a bit less noticeable, particularly when we bake it down. There's another one. We'll just try and blend that in a bit more. And I suppose one thing to bear in mind, which I'm trying to catch myself from doing, is don't do so much blending that you lose the silhouette of the parts. Um, the beauty of using photo textures like this is that you can um, basically use those to give you detail. Um, so if, if you sort of do a bit too much blending and you lose some of the, the contour lines, it defeats the point almost of, uh, of using these photo textures to begin with. Okay, so one other thing is if I just try and select, I might have to do a bit of manual masking here. Let's just cut out this, this handle. Because once we've got the handle on its own layer, I'm going to try and desaturate the base texture of the gun so it's not quite as uh, colourful. Um, essentially we just want it gunmetal grey. Uh, as you can see there's a lot of yellows and I mean a lot of that's I think just sort of camera lens distortion as well as the environment the photo is taken in so we'll try and get rid of as much of that as possible. Um, there is a little bit here on the edge of the, the grip too but we can hopefully get rid of that. Um, doesn't have to be too precise, just a general sort of general cutout. Oh, I'm following the wrong line, but that's okay. Let's just trim there where it's not as reflective. It's one thing I'm not a big fan of in Photoshop. Once you're locked into one of these modes and you're clicking along, you can't actually really zoom out. All right, so we'll cut and paste that, hide that layer, and then from here we'll desaturate. And let's just add in a new layer. And where is our bucket tool? So we'll hide that, hide that, bring this one back. Let's just sample there. That looks like a nice, nice blue there. So we'll Bring these back. And this one will just be an overlay layer. Okay. So that looks quite good. And then we'll bring the grip back. And that's a bit more of an even texture. So if you're not quite a fan of that shade of blue, you know, you can play with the values a bit, make it a bit grayer or so. I mean, that, what's that? Maybe 75%, I think is a happy, happy medium. Um, and yeah, so that looks quite good to me. And then the, the next part we might do is just a bit of um, evening out the shadows. So the burn tool is quite good for that. You can just sort of go through and, and lighten that up so it's not quite as dark. Go through there, just sort of lighten these up so it's a bit more even. Um, it can look a bit funny once you actually put the model together if there are these really dark parts. Um, so it's good to just sort of go through and make it a bit more even with the lighting. Um, and then always you can go back later and, you know, add dark patches if you need to or anything like that. Um, just watch out and see here, I've sort of made it a bit too light and it's a bit obvious. So just try to keep it, keep it within the lines. You can harden the brush up if you need to as well, just to get a bit more control. All right, so that's looking good. Um, okay, so 
that's good as a base. Let's just pop that in a group so it's a bit easier to manipulate. I say that as it all falls apart. Gosh, what's it doing? Ah, oh, this layer here. So it's just... Doesn't quite want to merge properly. Gosh, Photoshop. Now, what are these edges here? Okay. Obviously got a bit, a bit of leftover texture on the side there, so we'll trim that out. Get rid of that. Okay, so that's quite good. Um, the only other thing I probably want is like a top angle. So I might, uh, if we duplicate this group, let's make that a, merge that all together. Let's just grab this top section. We'll take that, get rid of that duplicated part, and then just sort of start hacking away at parts of it. So we'll grab this part here. Oops, why is that gone? So this can be our top. Um, just flip that around in there. If you bring it a bit further out, we might fill in that middle section with a bit of bit more metal texture. So we'll bring that one to the background and just sort of stretch it out. There we go. So it doesn't look great at the minute, but we'll we'll blend it all together and it'll look a bit better. There we go, and we'll just blend from that side as well. We'll go from the top, go down here, blend that. Um, really, I don't think there's much of a ridge on the actual pistol, so we might try and get rid of this sort of shadow shape here too. Let's just blend from there, and we'll go down and phase that out. And same on this side, we'll go from the top. Fade, phase that out. Okay. Actually, no, I think we might leave that there. That looks a bit better. Um, so I'm not a big fan of this bottom section, so we'll cut that, paste that, flip that vertically, pop that in, merge that in again, and then just sort of go in and clean up some of these little patches here. Okay. So that's looking good. Uh, one thing I did notice on the actual pistol, um, on, I think it's this one here, it's got these ridges running along the top all the way up to the site. So we might try and replicate those in here. So we'll just grab the line tool give it a medium tone sort of color. And when I say that, it's gone completely black. So we'll do that. And then we'll just try and uh, bevel it. So we'll say it's an outer bevel, maybe three pixels wide. Um, don't really want to soften it. We'll make it a hard chisel. So the screen color will make a bit lighter. The dark color will make darker. That way it's a bit more obvious. And actually we might Make that a bit of a darker color, maybe. Let's 
I think that might look a bit better. No, actually, not a fan of that. Let's just make it. Uh, here we go. So fill color is empty. Stroke color is going to be dark. We'll make that two pixels wide. And then I think we'll just do the lines manually, to be honest. That looks good. We'll duplicate one of those, bring it across, change the color to like a highlight. And that'll look okay once we have a few, oops, once we have a few more of them. So let's just rasterize those, merge it, and then start duplicating more. Okay, so duplicate, move. Merge those, bring that across. So I think that's looking better. And once we've got the shape, I think we can just sort of do a... There we go. Okay, that looks quite good. The one thing we can do if we don't want to have the whole slide that color, we can just chop that out. Oops, wrong layer. Wrong layer twice in a row. There we go. And you can probably sort of um, just subtly sort of erase that on the sides. It looks a little bit more contoured. Um, but I think I might actually leave that. I'll just do the bottom. So it's not quite a harsh a cutoff. Maybe drop that to 50 and we'll do a little bit more. Yeah, get the impression it's sort of, yeah, beveled in. Um, all right, so let's drag that down a few pixels. Copy that section, paste it. Flip it around. So we've got the same up here on the top and we'll make that also a hard light overlay merge those together oops probably shouldn't have done that so soon bring that down to cool so that's looking quite good. And I think from here, we can start to sort of stitch it together in Blender. So let's um, let's start trying to do that. I think from here, we'll do all of this as a project from view. So we'll project that, that can go up here. And that's, I've obviously made it a little bit too big, but we can actually just separate that out and drag it back to the right place. Um, I think that should blend decently. Oh, maybe not quite, so we might bring that a bit back. Cool, so that's looking quite good. Uh, this top part will also have to just touch up. So we'll project that. Now, which side is which? Okay, so we'll probably want that 180 degrees, that way it's actually facing the same as in our texture. And we will shrink that down a bit too.
Ah, okay. My mistake. That should actually be the whole whole width there. All right, so I've stuffed that up slightly. So maybe I might just try reprojecting that again. Um, this time might just do it. So we'll do all of that. Uh, I'll leave out that top part and we'll, we might just swap which parts of the, the texture that's actually mapped to. So we'll shift that in here, scale that down a tiny little bit. Um, just make sure that isn't hanging off too far. That all looks pretty good. It's nice. Uh, that part can probably come down a little bit. Might just separate those, bring that up a bit. Oh, I've totally forgotten this half. Um, look, that's okay. We can always just sort of break that off and, and mirror that later. Um, all right, so let's do this top part again. So we'll do it from the top. Project from view. Rotate 180. And there we go, that looks a bit more like it. So we'll bring that up here. That will look a bit better. Um, although it might just do the whole shebang in one go. Make that'll look a bit better. Yeah, so I think that might be a little bit too big, so I'll shrink it back down to a more reasonable sort of size. Um, those top ridges are friggin' enormous, so I'll try and figure out a way to yeah, condense that a bit more. That looks good. Still think these sort of three middle parts should be a Bit more, uh, not quite as massive. So I think that looks better. In hindsight, that uh, that shadow, I think we might get rid of. So let's just in this view, just sort of quietly paint that out. Yeah, that probably won't look great. Uh, it's a little bit too, a bit too white. Um, but yeah, it's just a matter of sort of playing with it. Just figure out, you know, where you want your highlights, where you want your shadows, um, and just keep sort of going from there. Really, try and paint maybe from the middle there. Yeah, that looks better. 
And if we just sneakily cut and paste it, so we'll transform it, flip it horizontally, pop that back in. Uh, just a little bit of manual sort of touch up, maybe in here. It doesn't look quite as symmetrical. Or how about, let's just leave it and we'll, we'll see how it looks. Cool. So it looks good. I might darken up that center though, so it does look slightly recessed. Maybe just crop that to 50% or so. I think as well, we might just do a sort of quick, quick little, uh, just drop that to 25%, quick little paint for some highlights. The soft light seems to be pretty good. Let's just do maybe 25% there. Nice light blue there. Hmm. Let's just undo that a bit, actually. What I might be able to do, actually, without getting too involved, is maybe just brighten up in here to 20. Just sort of, yeah, lighten up that edge. Work smarter, not harder. Um, and one other thing. Let's just overlay it with this color. Or maybe not. Might break the blending a bit too much on the side view, so we'll just get rid of that. Try and uh, scale those in a bit. And just bring those out. Excellent. All right. So that's looking quite good. Um, we'll have to do a bit of touching up just here at the front. So let's keep going with that. And I think on the left, I did forget to project that. So let me just project all of this from view, invert it, and then we'll just stitch, stitch the seams up a bit so they match. Okay, that's looking good. One thing you'll probably notice, we're actually missing uh, the cutout for the, the shell ejection port. Um, that'll, hopefully I'll, I'll either duplicate this and move it down and just sort of paint it in manually or 
once we paint it, uh, sorry, bake the texture to a different UV set, then I'll you can insert it there. Um, but for now, let's just sort of keep going with the the rear of the gun. Um, I think I don't have a reference image for the rear, so let's just grab one of those from Google. I mean, worst case, you can always sort of just paint these details in and, and fudge it a bit. Um, you can do a lot of the work just in Photoshop, but I'm a fan of just trying to find a picture that'll work and then just we'll, we'll blend it in. Um, I think one of these we could probably make, make that work. As long as it's high enough resolution. Ah, that's literally perfect. That's exactly what we're after. All right, so Photoshop. Drag that one in. Now, I would say for this image, grab the darker side versus the lighter side because that'll make it a bit easier to, uh, to blend. So we'll grab that, flip it horizontally, and it doesn't have to look perfect. Um, you know, obviously that's a bit more squished than the original, but from here we can start brightening up the shadows, um, just evening it out a bit more. There we go. Um, and I'll want to burn those highlights a little bit. So let's just sort of darken those smidge. Just in there, just up there. Just so it's even, more even lighting. Oh gosh, doesn't want to select that nicely. And we'll just keep going, um, sort of trimming out the bits we do want, cutting off the stuff we don't want. Um, I think a lot of this, truth be told, I'm not going to want the hand grip portion of it. Um, if I do, I can always just come back to the reference image later. Um, and I think we'll desaturate that and do the same trick as we did before, just bring this overlay layer up uh, on top. Merge those together. And let's delete all of that. And then once we bring everything back, probably the last thing to do uh, once we do that, we'll just bring up the brightness a bit to match. Looks good. So if you sort of put it there, that looks pretty decent. And I'll just stick that there. Anyway, we've really got, um, you know, space, I'd say. Looks good. Uh, I might have broken the blending slightly there. Yeah, so I might just, I'll put that last little bit back. Still looks quite good. So the rear now, if we just go to the back, grab all of this and project it from our view. That should line up quite well. Yeah, although one thing I might try and just blend out is this dark portion at the top because I think that's... I don't actually know why that looks a bit different, but let's just try and blend that in a bit. So we'll go healing brush. Maybe that won't work. Wrong layer, that's why.
So we'll just start healing from down here. Okay, that looks pretty good. Let's just do a couple of manual touch-ups. Shrink that down. Uh, eight pixels. Just sort of blend all of this stuff in nicely. Okay, so now if we come back in, it should look a bit more blended. Okay, so next one to tackle, I think, would be the front. So if we could pull up our, uh, here it is, our nice front reference image. Pull that in into Photoshop here. And try and find, I think that's probably a good midpoint. So we'll copy that, paste that, uh, flip it around uh, horizontally. And about there, I'd say. Okay, so cut that, discard all of that. And that's looking quite good. And then Probably all I'll really have to do is here is just bring that up. Um, I think what we'll do is just mask that overlay layer so it's only affecting the barrel. And I think we'll just have to do a little bit of touching up with the shadows. We'll bring all that up a bit. One thing we could just do is um, desaturate it and then bump the brightness and the contrast a bit. So that all looks pretty good. We'll save that. And then on our model, let's just grab the front. Project that. So I think here we'll have to do a little bit of blending uh, to get that to work. So I think as well, uh, let's grab the smudge tool, just do a bit of work, or maybe the healing brush might be better. Just 12, we'll go in here, scrape that out. Um, and then just start smudging all of this out. Actually, before we do that, let's merge those two together. And that way, it's a bit freer. To do all this. So it'd probably be a bit easier with a drawing tablet, but I don't actually have one of those. So I guess hopefully the mouse clicking is not too irritating for anybody watching. All right, we'll just do a quick sort of run over with this, break up the uh, symmetry a bit. So that looks good. If we refresh, that's a bit more blended. I'm still not loving that seam there, so I might sort of do a nice smooth... No, not quite. Let's just go back to the brush. I 
actually, let's just try and I think play with the brightness a bit. That might be the better option. Or not. Maybe I just need um oops. Duplicate this group again. Merge it. I'll just copy this front portion of the gun down here. I'll get rid of that duplicate duplicated section. Um, and I think if we line that up nicely. That's way too stretched. Just sort of line that up pretty well. Um, and then we bring that out to match it. Um, okay. Just try and once we merge these together, just do a bit more blending in there. Okay, I think that looks decent, um, not perfect, but should do what we're after. Should be okay, we just sort of maybe move that curve out a bit. Um, and let's just blend all this together a bit more too. Okay, so that looks a bit better. Um, probably what we'll have to do in this case though is split this and then just stick it there. And then when we reload, it should be a bit more blended. So depending on what you want to do, um, it might be best if you actually, what I might do um, is, is sort of cut out that uh, and extract that and actually put that on the barrel object itself rather than having it sit on the on the slide because as you can see there it looks good in silhouette but as we move it back it's not actually attached to anything so and i've just noticed as well i'm just going to fix up these uvs down here uh, all of them actually so there we go so project from view, Oops, scale it that way, and let's just select all of these. Just stitch these up real quick. 
um because i obviously forgot to do that before Okay, so that I think is decent enough. Might play with these slightly and just sort of bring that up a bit. Cool, so that looks good. Uh, this section here I'll probably have to do a bit more with later, but that's okay. Um, truth be told, I'm not sure we actually need all these other faces if we just do a quick cut look that's okay we can always we'll come back to that later um so yeah as i was mentioning before i might just go in here and I've got some guys commenting. Hey guys, how are you going? If you're still watching, sorry, I haven't seen, <laughs> haven't really been looking at the comments. Um, but um, yeah, I might just try and separate this out. So I'll copy that, copy this. Oh, whoops. Looks like I've actually accidentally merged two of the wrong layer. So I'll paste that out. Here, let's just do that again. And essentially, all I really need from here is just this part here. It's not a bit there. Um, the inside is not quite as black as it probably should be. So let's just um, duplicate that and we'll blur the one behind slightly. Gosh, why is it doing that? There we go. Um, so what do I need to do now? I need to just grab a bit of metal texture. So copy that'll be okay. Um, although I probably actually want to grab it from the proper Makarov layer. So we'll grab that, scale it up. Um, sharpen that slightly just so it looks a bit better. I'll grab, grab another one of these overlay layers, bring it up. Um, we only want to apply it to that area there, so we'll mask that, merge it. Put that behind, and there we go. Okay, so now I just need to sort of clean up the seams a bit. Now one thing I'll probably do just after I finish this is add an embossed or a bevel. Uh, in Photoshop, and that tends to really sort of sell the look. So I'll show you what that'll look like in a sec. I'll just finish cleaning up these edges.
Okay, so that's a bit better. Yeah, that looks good. So let's just blend that. If we choose, well, actually, hang on. Let's just um, let's do it properly. Yeah, could have just done that to begin with. Plus, you end up with a perfect circle. Anyway, so that looks good. Um, we'll obviously have to darken that a bit more. So I might get a darker color, screen it with a lighter color. And maybe four pixels, but we'll smooth it by a couple. Four pixels. That looks good. Okay. Uh, now, if I copy this, move it over on top of here. And I'll have to shift it there, merge that, and then just do a bit of manual cleanup. Now, if we go back into Blender and refresh our image, which looks like it's just shifted for some reason. Yep, that's okay. I'm going to shift that back. Don't know why that moved. Okay, so that looks good. And now for the barrel, make that, give that the same texture, front on, project from view, and that can sit there. And that looks decent. Again, we're going for low poly. Okay, uh, next one, because it's sticking out at me like a sore thumb, let's try tackling the sights. So I think if we go top view, project, uh, actually we can take that seam out because we don't need that anymore. So project again. Uh, and we've got a quite a nice little cutout for the sights there. So that looks good. I mean, maybe even if we do it from the back, uh, viewport, navigation will go orbit up, make sure it's uh, orthographic, maybe go up one more time and project from that view. There's a bit less, a bit less distortion. So, yep, that's good. Uh, maybe one thing I'll do with the top here, let's just bring that, maybe flip this. I'll give it a bit more, uh, yeah, that looks, that looks better. Cool. Um, and let's just project that from the side. Cool. All right. So that looks good. Although I think that's a little bit too dark for what we're doing. So shift that one down here a bit more. 
Cool, looking good. And we'll do the same with the rear sight. So just go in here. Uh, this whole base section, that can be a cube project. That'll just sort of lay it out a bit nicer for us. Uh, we'll sp split that side, invert it, just to sort of pack it in. That can be sitting there. And we'll put that there. Um, not a big fan of that sort of crusty part here, so I might maybe just turn that or pop it down here somewhere. That looks better. That bit. Cool. That looks pretty good. And now just the sight blades. And I forgot about these bases, so let's just quickly drop those out. Okay. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Uh, the front sight I'm just noticing is sort of su substantially lower than the the rear. So let's just bring that back in. And again, let's just sort of tweak that color so it's a bit more even. Might move that down here. A bit more. And then that can sort of sit maybe like this. Cool, looking good. Uh, this part is not looking good. Let's fix this up. Just squish that, bring that up a bit. Cool. All right. Um, now onto the onto the bottom part. So we'll give it a go. See what we can do in project from view. But we'll probably have to uh, I think separate out this this trigger segment here. So we'll grab all that. Separate that out. and just sort of see what we can do. Separate that, bring that out. All right. It's not too bad. Um, I think we'll have to do a little bit of sort of manual blending up this end. Um, if I go in here and let's just lock that because I keep selecting it by accident. Um, and so if I just grab grab this section here, paste that in. Probably just turn it so it's pretty straight. And we'll just sort of merge that in. Let's bring it this way. 
And just a little bit of blending there. A little bit of blending. Maybe too much blending. There we go, that looks quite good. So if we refresh, still a bit of black at the bottom. Okay. I'll just sort of bring it. Hmm. Now we just pop that one behind and um, sort of stretch that out a bit. Actually, potentially, if we just flip it, uh, let's just invert it vertically. Sort of do that. And then if we merge that. And just sort of remove what we can there. Think. That looks a bit more, bit bit better. Um, and that front piece will just um, project from view, and I think we'll stick it. Um, just grab the surrounding geometry, see where it lies, and then we can do a bit of a sneaky trick and just sort of stick it here. So it doesn't look 100%, but we can, yeah, that looks good. Cool. So it seems to be coming together. Um, let's just do a little bit more fine work here. Uh, how exactly are we going to do this part? Actually, what we could do, if we just unwrap it normally, And this is why invert that, bring it down to there, um, turn it, shrink it. It can doesn't look the best, but if we then line it up a bit more. Let's just maybe merge these verts here. Sure it's all even and then we'll go move it match the y match the y and then we'll merge it there that looks pretty pretty okay uh, now the next one is all of this trigger I really can't select today. All right, so we'll just grab all that. Bang, bang, bang. Um, unwrap normally. Now, what I might do actually, I haven't been doing it this whole time, but I might actually have to start um, doing some proper UV unwraps. So let's just mark all of that as a seam grab all this and unwrap oh, that has to be a seam as well so we'll grab this unwrap it normally and that way we get this nice straight texture uh, bring that across and we just sort of stack it on top of itself so not the most elegant way of doing it, but it will save us a bit of room. Okay. So now we just sort of stick it in here, maybe invert it. Yeah, I don't really want that theme to be honest. Okay, and we'll do the same for the side. Just unwrap normally.
Okay. Let's fix this up. Fix this up. Now, I know there is actually an add-on uh, UV squares, but I am lazy and forgot to install it before this stream. So you're probably looking at me and laughing. Why is he doing all this manually? Just because I am lazy. Okay. And we'll do that same trick. Just sort of stack it on top of itself. Doesn't have to look too great because it's just sort of just the trigger guard, you know. So separate it, move it. Okay, so now if we shrink that, pop it up here somewhere. That looks decent. And then finally, just the interior. Okay, shift that, just straighten up these segments, get through, silently wishing to myself I had UV squares, okay, and then just keep stacking, move that. We got to separate at that time, so there we go. Rotate that, scale it. What I'll do as well. Um, oh god, what did I do there? Um, let's just grab these just so I can see exactly where I put the other one. That way, it all lines up pretty well. Perfect. So, looking pretty good. Um, now, one thing I said I was going to go back and do, which I never did, is fix up this sort of sheen uh, around the edge of the handguard. I might just quickly do that now, because I'm starting to notice how bright it looks. Um, so just actually, before we start doing that, mask it, and then that way we can paint out of bounds without destroying the rest of the texture. You just sort of go around, blend all of this in. Okay, that's all good. Uh, these ones, I'm going to just go straight. Just sort of blend all of that through. Now, one thing I might do actually is if I fill this in, Let's just pick a color, and overlay that color. I think that looks okay, probably not the best. Maybe just the hue, the hue would look better. And then we'll just have to paint out uh, here because we want to probably keep that gold color so that looks good a bit more even all right um so up here i think my mask got a bit wonky so let's just um what number one Let's fix up the mask, so I'll 
make sure all of this is well hang on go back to this area and quickly just marquee it all so we'll just do that oops not too quickly Um, all right, so we'll just start smudging all of this out. Um, disable it for now. Probably doesn't look great at the minute, but bear with me. I'm sure there is probably a smarter way to do this, but I this is just the way I normally tend to do it. Actually, having said that, we're in too deep now. Can't go back. Or can we? Yeah, yeah, lucky I did that. Um, how are we going to tackle this, guys? What will I do? Yeah, what are we going to do? Look, it's okay for now. Um, it's not, you know, too glaringly bad. Uh, I probably just need to sort of cut out a section of this, or we'll duplicate that, uh, merge the layers together. Let's just grab this big chunk here. So we'll copy and paste that. Let's get rid of that. And so this is going to be the rear view of our gun. So we'll just get rid of these bits and pieces that we don't really need. Um, probably the smarter way to do it. Grab it all. Do that. Um, it's not quite straight. Let's fix that up there, which is good. Square it up a bit. Okay. Okay, so let's just start. Um, actually, truth be told, I don't know if the normal Makarov has uh, the grip extends all the way around. No, it does, obviously. <laughs> it's just my texture that's wrong. I'll have to fix that up. Yeah, okay. So it obviously goes all the way around the back, um, which I think I... Yeah, obviously didn't cut it quite right the first time, so that's okay. We'll can fix that up. Um, let's just... If we sort of stretch that out a bit more... Uh, let's just grab our normal white brush and basically tell it to mask, uh, you know, extend the mask out here up to that little section there. That looks good. Um, I think that might be the better bet, actually. If it, just stick with color. And then this way, if we do 
this, duplicate that, transform, flip it vertically. Bob is our uncle. There we go. Just probably need to grab part of this layer, copy that, bring it down. It's about there. Just stretch that across to there, and then that will look good. Okay. All right, so from the back, grab all this. And project from view. Grab it, shift it. Stick it there, roughly. Yeah, I might need to tinker with that a bit. That doesn't look fantastic at the moment. Okay, so we might be able to duplicate that, bring it up a bit more. Cool. So not not perfect here. Um, feel like at the time I probably could have given it a bit more uh, geometry to work with, but um, you know, for a basic basic model it's um not too bad um and just need to probably use one of these oh actually i can probably just use this that looks pretty similar to, to a hand grip or maybe down here no i think maybe up here it's a bit a bit higher res All right, so we're nearly done. Um, maybe let's just kick an easy goal and do the hammer quickly. So just go into here, um, mark all of these edges as seams. That one and that one. Select uh, seam. Yep, so unwrap that. Go into here. Yeah, we're going to want to basically combine all of these into one. So we'll grab, grab that, grab that. Make sure you separate it first. Grab that. And there we go. So back in, back in here. Now, if we drag that over, stick that on our hammer texture. There we go. So that looks pretty good. Um, let me just hide that and fix up this interior part for now too. Uh, that can that can just be black, I'd say. Um, 
gosh, I can't select anything. Here we go. Select that. Select that. Select all this and we'll stick it in the same spot so it's consistent. Okay, that looks good. Um, that's part of the slides. We won't worry about that for now. So that looks pretty good. Uh, last thing is, actually, if I reuse, from side, project that. Yes, that looks good. So if I reuse this little bit of uh, metal, Uh, actually, here we go. I think I've got that. Yeah, cool. So I'll shift that, move it down here. Let's just grab a ellipse, uh, make that a dark metal color. Or well, actually, let's just make it black. Back to our ellipse. Uh, which I forgot to give a fill color, I think. Get rid of the ellipse. Uh, needs a fill. Yep, so dark black. Stroke, no stroke. And we'll bevel it. I think we'll soften that one out a bit more. Make it bigger. Yep, that looks good. Depth can just be 100%. Doesn't have to be super dark. And now in here, if we refresh our texture and shift that, make this a bit smaller. Actually, what we're going to end up with is a nice little hammer texture. Which looks pretty good. Um, and if you want to make the hole a bit smaller, you can just increase it. Now this one here, uh, that will have to... We'll project that from the back. And that looks pretty darn good, actually. I'm quite happy with how that's looking. Pretty darn good. Yeah, only thing I'm not loving at this point actually is that sort of sheen uh, here. So I might just try and blend that out a bit. Uh, maybe just with the heel tool. Oh gosh. There we go. And probably actually at this point, just try and get rid of this ring. Yeah, okay, so that looks pretty good. Now if we shift that back, um, I'll also need a barrel texture because that doesn't great at the minute. Uh, actually, I might pinch it from my previous model. Um, let's just grab... I think these ones will lock. Uh, so I'll come in here. Just grab a portion of that, paste it in here. All right, so now if we color that, so we'll uh, just duplicate this one again. Yeah, that's fantastic. Bring it up here. Bring my barrel up, um, mask, mask this so it only affects the barrel. Um, let me just quickly trim out the edges of that. Uh, 
Photoshop's being a bit weird at the minute. Here we go. So delete that. And we'll delete that. And that gives us a nice barrel texture. So now if we go back in here. And let's just unselect that, unselect that, and we'll unwrap it one more time. Uh, I was hoping to get away with not having to put seams on it, but I'll put some seams on it. All right, so let's just grab this, separate it, invert it, stick it over here. So now we've got everything the same, scale it in a bit, scale it down. And I think I've probably put the seam in the wrong place actually. So maybe I'll just separate that, rotate it, what, 90? Oops, sorry, can't think today. 90. No, oh, it'll have to be 120. That looks good. Uh, and I just want to merge by distance. Now, if we move the slide back, it doesn't look like crap. All right, so lucky last, uh, almost. I'm just going to do the mag well too, probably at some point. Uh, let's just quickly, I might just rush through this and do a little crappy, uh, just do a project from view. We got to give it a material. So there we go. So look, not the best, not the worst, but um, that's pretty well it. Um, I might, just because I'm not really happy with how that looks. No, that doesn't look great either. Uh, what can we do? Maybe let's just grab See if there's any like bake light textures on uh, on textures.com. We can just sort of fudge it from there. I think that might be the best best option. Yeah, that looks a lot better. So if I go in here and basically mask off the bake light to that, shift, and we'll just stick that there, that looks a lot better, um, but I'll need to just blur out this section here, so merge those, Maybe not. Gosh, okay. Um, if I blend this a bit, yeah, there we go. That looks better. Okay, so on the base, let's just quickly even this out a bit more. Jeez, I didn't do a very good job with this to begin with. Uh, 
So I think that's meant to be metal anyway, so I won't do that. Anyway, uh, so in here, let's... Let's just expand. Oh, why is it not doing that? Anyway, uh, duplicate bakelite layer and just sort of shimmy it around, I think. Right, get rid of that, move it over here, shift that to the back. Down there. Got to rasterize that, so I can actually delete. Just sort of blend all this in a bit. Probably help if I had a blending, blending brush. There we go. That looks a bit better. Oh gosh, what have I done now? How do I get this back? Here we go. All right. So we'll just sort of even that, even that all out a bit. And I think, hopefully. This will make it look a lot better. Oh, look at that. It's a lot better. Uh, so one other thing I might just quickly do is bring these verts forward a bit just to sort of round it out and these ones back a bit. Uh, maybe this one, just sort of, yeah, round it all out. And that part there, I'll have to do a bit of manual blending, I think. Yeah, where can I steal a bit of metal from? Maybe just there, but I'll have to bring it in front of all the Bakelite business. Uh, color overlay, what is it? I think it's soft light. Oh, come on, man. Whatever, just duplicate this. Okay. Obviously merge those. There we go, that looks good. And merge that and just sort of blend it, blend it out. Actually, no, that doesn't look great. Let's let's move it up a bit and then Go from there, I think, and we'll need a harder brush. So maybe five. Doesn't look great, but... Uh... All right, better than it was before. Uh, and then that whole section I'll probably just have to heal, get rid of. That's all right. And then back here, let's just sort of smudge that out. Or heal it. Let's just uh, grab that healing brush. 
and we'll get rid of that. Oh, that's not great. So after all that, let's just get rid of this. Get rid of that. Save it, refresh it, and then just bring these UVs back up, I think. I don't know. Anybody in the chat think that that looks okay, or I have to do a bit more blending? Because I'll try and... Um, my reference, no, the references show it stops down there, hey. Okay, I can't be lazy. I'll fix it up. Um, I'll need more metal in that case. Okay, that looks decent. Now if I just blend out this um, that part there, we'll just make that a bit darker so it doesn't stand out as much. I think, I think it might be golden. I don't know, I've merged too much together. All right, so let's just scrap all the stuff from down here. Okay, uh, we'll bring that. Duplicate one of these again, put it at the front. That one, bring it at the front. Mask that, merge that, and then what layer is that? This is what I get for not naming my uh, layers very well. It's that one, so we'll bring it in front of the bake light. That way I can bring it down a bit more. And then this whole section, I think if I just sort of subtly squish that and tweak my UVs to match. I think we should be good, guys. Oh, sorry, operator. I didn't see your uh, your message. Did you prefer it having it sort of all the way up to here? All right. So that's pretty well done. Um, so what I might do now, which as you can see, the texture doesn't look great on its own. So what I'll probably do now is just, um, uh, let me finish off. I'll uh, do the visual geometry, visual geometry, Let's merge all of that together. Uh, does that one have any modifiers? No. Like that, that's good, that's good, that's good. Excellent. So get rid of the references. Cool, cool, cool. All right, so now we'll start merging everything together. Okay, so that looks good. And I'll go in Oh, what is that? 
Oh, that's the underside of the slide. That's okay. We can uh, put that in a black back spot for now. All right. So what I'll do before I screw everything up is make a copy. Uh, new UVs. Now what we're going to do is go in and essentially make a combined UV set and we'll switch that over so it's rendering with that one. And we're going to make this so it's a bit more of a combined texture rather than having everything separate. Um, so I'll go into the combined UVs. Let's just do a smart UV project see how that turns out it's not too bad um, I've got an add-on here that I just use to sort of pack stuff it's better than me doing it manually I found um, oops we'll pack all that um, looks pretty good there's a little bit of overlap um, in terms of now that we've applied all the modifiers you can see here there's one hand grip here's the other hand grip so there's a bit of redundancy, but that can be a good thing. I mean, it lets us add a bit more detail if we want later on. So anyway, now that we've got that second UV set, um, let's go ahead and we've got to tinker with the materials slightly just to basically say, we'll create a new texture. We'll call that Makarov combined diffuse. Um, that's fine. Don't really need the alpha channel, so we'll take that out. Um, that's good. So we'll copy this, uh, make that our combined diffuse. Now, one thing we have to do is, it's a bit silly, I think, that you sort of have to explicitly say which image uses which uh, UV mapping. So we'll go through... Um, So the UV map there, duplicate that, duplicate that. Uh, there we go. So the combined mapping is going to use the, the new UV set and the original one is going to use the original UV set. So you can see now we've actually fixed that up. It's gone back to how it was, which is great. That's, that's how we want it. Um, but when we render it, um, so if I go into the UV set, here, it's actually going to render using that UV set, which is good. Uh, so I think that's all we got to do for now. So if I just go into cycles, uh, ba -ba -ba, the bake settings. So what I want to do is bake just the diffuse. Um, and I don't want to account for any lighting. I just want to do the, the color. And that's about it. I might drop that margin down a bit just so it doesn't overlap and bake. We'll see if that gives us an okay texture. Gosh, it's taking a while to render. <laughs> Here we go. Slowly. There we go. So uh, if I just go back into here and swap over to the combined diffuse, Let's just hide that for now. Uh, you can see it's sort of just stuck everything. I don't know why I've ended up with a third handle there, but um, maybe I've got some overlapping geometry somewhere. But if I create a new material, we'll call that one uh, Makarov Combined. And let's just make that a emission texture. And we'll get it to use the that one there. Uh, let's just I'll make it. Oops, copy of that one. Hide the original and this one. So as you can see, it is using that new uh, UV set. So if I just select this sort of area for now, you can see it's looks the same. Um, I think the barrel, if we separate that out as a as its own object and just move this back, 
it's all yeah as expected which is cool and the benefit is now we've got a nice um, 1024 size texture that um, you know it's a bit bit better packed than it was previously so that's always good and then the other thing is if, if you want now you can essentially go in and um, uh, wherever my Oh, I haven't saved my image yet, that's why. So the combined diffuse now, we can actually go in and scale that down. Maybe not that much. Let's just do a quarter size. So we'll do that. Um, refresh that. And yeah, so it still looks decent because again, we're going for, um, you know, PS1 look if we really want to do proper PS1 look, you can make it sort of closest, um, nearest neighbor scaling instead of linear scaling. Um, but yeah, so it looks pretty decent. Not too bad for how long have we been going? Maybe, what, two, three hours? Um, yeah, so not too bad for a bit of work. Um, as you can see, it's obviously still got a bit of detail. I think that could just be an error on my part. Something there has gone a bit awry, but... Yeah, if you were following along or you're thinking of doing a PS1 model, that's sort of my my workflow of late. I found that this UV trick at the end is quite quite handy. It it cleans up a lot of your, you know, you don't have to make your texture original texture perfect. You can just sort of go in and you know, map out the parts you need and at the end merge it all together. Um so yeah, hopefully that's helpful if anybody else is working on anything PS1 related or um, anything like that. Hopefully that helps. Um, I was planning to go for maybe another 40 minutes or so, but obviously I've wrapped up early enough. So I might leave it there, guys. If anybody has any questions or anything like that, just leave it in the comments and I can I can get back to you. So thanks for watching. I'll um, hopefully, I mentioned at the start of the stream, I'm actually thinking of doing these hopefully maybe week every weekend. Um, my intention being I'm hopefully going to put together a few of these models and um, make them available either for a couple of bucks or just make them free for the community. Um, I've got another one here. I'll just quickly show it off here. Like I've got some more modern weapons as well that I'm just kind of planning. Uh, next week I've got it scheduled for a, an a M4 rifle, you know, like an M16 sort of gun. So. I'll try and get that done next week. And yeah, so if anybody's interested, just stay tuned and I'll I'll be back. Um, have a great weekend, guys. I'll, I'll catch you later.